shotglassdigital.com. Rebel Force Radio is brought to you in part by Little Debbie Snacks, bakers of all galactic goodness, like mini donuts, star crunch, cosmic cupcakes, cosmic brownies, nutty bars, and much more. It's all about celebrating your love of a galaxy far, far away. And Little Debbie is the fan's choice for all those sweet moments. Little Debbie, official snack of Rebel Force Radio, Rancho Obi-Wan, and fans around the galaxy. Rebel Force Radio presents... Hello, what have we here? Fangirls going rogue. I met her in a Jedi chat room. Star Wars news, topics, and conversation. From the female point of view. I like the sound of that. This is Fangirls going rogue. So it has been a huge time for Star Wars recently. Force Fridays happened, Dragon Con has happened, and Disney Infinity and there's just too much to handle. This is Fangirls Going Rogue. I'm Teresa Delgado. I am one of the hosts of the show. Joining me are my two amazing co-hosts who had fantastic Force Friday experiences. First up, Trisha Barr. How are you today? I'm um, I, I fangirl flailing like almost all the time now. It's become like a reaction. So I'm awesome. I'm awesome. It's an everyday thing, I think. We're getting to that point. We're almost 100 days away or right around 100 days away from The Force Awakens. So it's about to get crazy. So to help us deal with crazy, Sarah Woloski, how are you? I am excellent, too. I think Force Friday just hit me and and the Star Wars excitement just ramped up like the the 24 hours before that, even on Twitter and on Facebook, on all social media. Like Star Wars fans are just going crazy and we're sharing this experience together and I love it. Well, and we couldn't do this alone. We had to have somebody who has been going to conventions like crazy and is one of the few Force Awakens cosplayers out there and probably the best Ray that I've seen. Kay, how are you? I'm finally exiting recovery mode from Dragon Con. Yay! Yay. <laughs> that takes a while. <laughs> they had 70,000 people there this year? Yeah. Whoa. Golly, that con has grown so much, you know, but it's still one of the most fun. And I really wish I could have gone this year. I was totally bummed. But I did have something really cool that happened that I wanted to update you guys on. We've talked a little bit about my Geek Force Club that I started at the school that I work at. And we've really just started getting going this year since school just started. And we watched the first episode, Spark of Rebellion, of Star Wars Rebels. And let me tell you, the reaction from these kids was one of the best things I've ever seen. Keep in mind, these are high school kids. Most of my group is around 16, and they've never seen it. And so I'm sitting in the back watching them react and just saying, oh, please let them react to this part. Please let them like that. And you heard the little gasps and different things. And so it was really, it was really, really fun. And to be honest, the best part was there's one part, since it's almost an hour, where they cut for a commercial on WatchDisneyXD.com. And they all like screamed out, no, what are they doing? They can't be over. And I'm like, no, it's just a commercial. It's okay. <laughs> they loved Kitwar. They did the Kitwar arms over and over. <laughs> and um, they really liked Ezra a lot, which was very interesting to me. Because it's, since we've talked about Rebels, you know, we've kind of worn up, warmed up to Ezra. Mm -hmm. We liked some of the other characters better. But they really liked Ezra from the start. And so the coolest thing that I got to tell them today was that they got a tweet back to their club Twitter from Taylor Gray. Wow. Nice. The beginning of fandom. Yeah, so they were pretty stoked about that. So I just want to let you guys know, they, they're they totally into it. They changed up our whole schedule. This coming week, we're supposed to watch an episode of Star Trek, the original series, and they took a vote to continue watching Rebels. So Rebels beat Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> And luckily, I can give them access to watch Disney XD, which they a lot of my students um, were low socioeconomic. So they don't some of them don't have access to that kind of stuff, much less to have computers at home. So I'm going to be kind of their way to watch it. So I'm pretty stoked about that. Yay. Welcome to the fandom. That's so exciting. I, it, I just think it's really cool. It's back to school and everybody can have fun doing lots of fun things, incorporating their Star Wars into their classroom. And I've been playing with my BB-8 from Sphero and, you know, tinkering it with like the engineer that I am. So it's been kind of fun. I, I keep thinking of a way that 
for our engineering, we can do like outreach and go to classrooms. I'm thinking, how can I do this? How can I take them into, uh, you know, into something and say, this is like all the things you have to do to be an engineer. Like they had people make the packaging and design instructions and the app. That's a different type of engineering. So it was, it's so cool. But that kind of like leads us into Force Friday, which was kind of, I, I don't know, my Force Friday seemed to last from like Wednesday when the <laughs> unboxing <Yep. laughs> until uh, mid, I think we all did midnight something, right? Oh, yeah. And we then it, even did. beyond, even to Friday itself as well. Yep, that was me. <laughs> I slept not a wink pretty much from Thursday until Friday night. Luckily, I had Saturday off, and I slept for about 13 hours. Oh. I was out. I was just like, done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what what's, we talked about on our fangirl chat that was up now about Disney Infinity, which you guys check it out if you haven't checked it out. But we talked about what we were going to get or what we were hoping to get or picking your thing that you were going to get. So maybe we'll go around the room and say what everybody got. Sarah, what did you get on Force Friday? Okay, so uh, my my midnight was actually taken up by a different event, a DK publishing event. So I ended up getting some books at Mysterious Galaxy Bookstore. Uh, I got the the Leia Moving Target, Princess Leia a Moving Target, and Star Wars Absolutely Everything You Need to Know. I also ended up getting, uh, downloading uh, Aftermath on my Kindle, and also, uh, what is it, Lost Stars, Lost Stars, which I immediately started reading, and I got through one page on Force Friday night <laughs> uh, before I passed out. <laughs> Was it a good page? It it yes. Okay. <laughs> so that was on Thursday. Thursday night. night. Yes, yes. Yeah. You're right. I got home at like four a.m. <laughs> yeah, but it looks like you had a great time at the event. Just all the tweets and you had like activities and stuff. So okay, yeah. So DK Publishing asked Richard and I of Skywalking Through Neverland to host the launch of their Star Wars Absolutely Everything You know Need to Know book tour, uh, which is super exciting. It was held in San Diego at Mysterious Galaxy Bookstore, and the authors Adam Bray, Cole Horton, and Michael Koki were there, as well as Cecil Castellucci, who wrote Moving Target, A Princess Leia Adventure. So we got to host a Q&A with all four authors, as well as some trivia sessions. And it, it was super fun. It, it started at 9.30 p.m. It went to midnight, at which point the bookstore started selling all the books. And then, you know, there was a big signing with all the authors. And it was super cool. And Adam Bray actually came over to Richard and I and said, hey, can you sign my, my book, my yearbook? It was cute. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> so we actually signed his Star Wars Absolutely Everything You Need to Know book, <laughs> as well as all the other authors. And I do want to plug the fact that we actually posted that entire Q&A and trivia that entire evening. We recorded it for Skywalking Through Neverland, and it is now up on episode 92. So if you want to hear some really fun stories, especially Cecil Castellucci, when she talked about A Princess Leia Adventure, it was really interesting to hear her process in that. And it made me really want to read this book. It's fun that you got to hang out with Cole. Um, Cole Horton is probably one of the funniest people I've ever met in my life. Woohoo! Yeah, those guys are all really fun. Cole Horton does, he writes at StarWars.com, and I think, didn't he do the Disney, yes. he's a runner too. He did the yeah. Run Disney event. That was his very first um, like mar half marathon it was last uh, January for the Star Wars half marathon. All right, so we expect to see him running again. Yes. And <laughs> you can learn everything you need to know about Star Wars <laughs> <laughs> from this book. So all all I've I've been reading reading a lot of Star Wars books, but I got to see the the Instagram picture of the Ray and BB-8 from that book that yes. you sent me. So that was all I needed to know. <laughs> 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 and that'll get that'll catch I'll catch up to that book here at the end of the week. So I'm still like I'm staying up late late reading and <laughs> and then Teresa, what did you get on the big day? I 
targeted all of the stuff that we said on the episode. So I'll go into that in a minute. But I covered a Toys R Us store for Jedi News, and I got to meet Jedi Jeffrey the Giraffe, which was really cool. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But one thing that we discovered is that the Jeffrey Giraffe in Texas likes to wear clothes. So he was wearing a shirt. Whereas Jeffrey the giraffe in the UK likes to run around without clothes on. <laughs> so he's one of the things me and the Jedi News guys discovered is that um, here in America we're a little bit more conservative about the way our mascots appear. Wow. Uh, well, the Wookiees don't have clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was really – it was actually a really fun event. I got to hang out with um, the folks from the Central Texas Galactic Alliance. Um, it's a costuming group as well. It's just a big, huge Star Wars fan club. I got to hang out with all of them. Actually had Fangirls Going Rogue swag to hand out to them. I had buttons left over from Celebration, so I took those and I handed them out. And there was a little fangirl there that was just so excited to get the buttons. Um, And I had one Celebration exclusive button left. And so she got that. So it was really, really fun. And the whole experience was very interesting. You know, we walked in very orderly and all that stuff. But as soon as you got to the toy aisle, I mean, it was just really compact, small place. And everybody's just trying to get stuff. They're trying to be polite, but yet also push past people. So it was this crazy situation. But... I was able to grab at Toys R Us Pop Vinyls, Kylo Ren, Ray, and Captain Phasma. So I was able to grab the three of those before they were gone. After I grabbed the three of them, the within maybe 30 seconds of me grabbing them, the rest of the Pop Vinyls were gone. Wow. Um, I did not get BB-8. And then when I got over to the Black Series, all that was left was Finn. And the only one I really, really wanted was Ray. So I was like, okay. So I grabbed the Finn to hang on to him just in case I decided to buy him. And then they had this guy in the back of the store that had boxes that he was unboxing, letting us know what was in them. And everybody was asking for Black Series. I mean, the Black Series were gone within like two minutes. So the guy was saying, you know, I don't have any Black Series back here. And he's like, wait. I have a Kylo Ren and this other guy. But I was like, oh, I was so, I was right next to him when he said it. And I was like, I'll take it. And I took Kylo Ren out of his hands. Uh. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'll buy that. So I ended up putting Finn back and I bought Kylo Ren. So I bought three pops and Kylo Ren's Black Series six inch at um, Toys R Us. And then I went to Walmart and Walmart was cleaned out by the time I got there. There was nothing, <laughs> absolutely nothing. So I decided brilliant me who got home at two o'clock in the morning i'm gonna get up at seven and i'm gonna go to target at 7 30 and wait for the doors to open so i did and then there was some of the guys that were there at the toys r us were there and so we were all like okay what does everybody want so we told each other what we all wanted we walked back very orderly and everybody was helping each other Oh. They were like, here's this for you. Like They were like, Teresa, you wanted the Ray Black Series, right? And so one of the guys grabbed it and gave it to me. Oh. And then I found I found the remote control BB-8, the target one, for one of the other guys. And so we were helping. And then so we went back to the seasonal sh- section, and then that's where the pops were. And one of the guys was like, I've got the BB-8 for the girl that wanted the BB-8. And I'm like, that's me. Um, and so got that. And then I got the shirt you were talking about, Sarah. Yeah. And then they had all of the books. So I grabbed Lost Stars because I knew I was getting Aftermath from Del Rey for Bookworm. So I didn't bother with it. So I grabbed Lost Stars. So I ended up leaving with a blind bag, Micro Machines, another Black Series, a shirt, another pop vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you you made out well. Yeah. I th- yeah. So, Kay, what was in your haul? One thing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what was the thing you wanted? Um, I really wanted the Ray Black series, but by the time I got to the aisle, there were none. They lined us all up at the back of the store by the seasonal section, but then half the stuff was up at the front of the store. Mm. Yep. I um, heard that Target was doing that. Yeah. So it was, it, everyone was civil until it turned to midnight and then <laughs> it got a little crazy. And by the time I got up there, pretty much most of the pegs were clean. Mm-hmm. And uh, luckily, my boyfriend had walked past and kind of scoped out and eyed things out. He just really wanted the Kylo Ren Hasbro FX saber. Mm-hmm. And um, I just really wanted a ray. And so he was able to grab me a different ray. And 
his lightsaber because he was fast and he already knew where the things were when he got there. <laughs> he had force reflexes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have gotten nothing. <laughs> and I actually saw when we went up by the registers, a man with a basket completely full of like all the action figures. And he was sorting through to see what he got. Wow. Like, oh. Yeah, because, because people we mean, were doing the arm thing. Yeah. Yeah. And it being Dragon Con too, there were vendors there that were then selling them at their oh. table oh. for Game over twice. Sauce. Yeah. That over is twice lame. with the actual prices. Yeah. That's so sad. that was that was frustrating. I did once I got back home, I did stop in a Barnes and Noble and I got a uh, Funko Pop Kylo and Ray for sentimental reasons. Oh. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. Well, here's the one thing. Everybody needs to take a take a tip from Steve Sansweet, do not get on eBay and overpay for this stuff. Right. Just This was just the first wave. It's going to be on the shelves. It's going to be on the shelves in mass as we get closer to the movie. There's also two more wave releases of big toy and collectible releases as we get to Force Friday. So, Or not to Force Friday, but to the Force Awakens movie release. So don't do it. Don't do it. Did you see John Boyega's Instagram where he's mm-hmm. like, don't be greedy people, take two, you know, limit yourself to two or whatever. And then he flips the the shot and behind him is like a stack. Yeah. <laughs> he got one of everything. <laughs> he got one of everything. I know, but it was so, he's so funny. He's so funny. He just has, he has like very good comedic wit. So, oh. yeah. Well, Zach from Jedi News was actually at the Disney store that Daisy Ridley and John Boyega showed up to <laughs> for Force oh. Friday. And he got to meet them both and get their autographs on his action figures that he was <laughs> buying at the Disney store. And he he's just going into college. This is his first year of college. And he was flipping out. It was it was the most adorable thing I've ever seen. Oh, he that's like, so This is so crazy. But, you know, in British speak. Yes. Yeah, he needs to save those. He needs to like save those because someday yeah. he'll be like telling his children and his grandchildren that he met the people that that weren't starred in Star Wars. So and he had yeah. to buy a second one if he ever wants to use them. <laughs> there is a there is a Daisy Ridley style Tumblr now, which I have started following with our mm. fangirls going rogue Tumblr, mm. and she was wearing her Star Wars Vans. Ooh. Went for Ooh. that event in a black sweater, black I think black pants, and her and just her Star Wars vans, which she when she had a Twitter account had tweeted about way long ago. But anyway, you know you can do your Star Wars style uh, in a in a subtle way. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and she's very I, polite. She like <laughs> to imitate her on social media. Hello, Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> hello it's so, Twitter. it's so british to say yes. hello before you start anything <laughs> i well, think it was i think she looked back at and she's like john like she was hello instagram john pay attention <laughs> well trisha we haven't heard about your force friday <laughs> my force friday was an adventure um it it was all the Target employees had that worked in the unboxing section were all longtime fans, and they had realized there was nothing in their boxes that they wanted, so they had taken the evening off and all gone to Walmart, which is where, <laughs> 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 which was kind of funny. But when I got there, the Walmart is twenty four hours, so they didn't have a lineup, and there was one guy there who happened to be getting something for his, his sick son and realized they were selling Star Wars stuff. So he was waiting to buy Black Series, but he didn't know what. And I said, well, what are you getting? He's like, well, I'm going to get a Darth Vader and something. And I'm like, um, like the, those things aren't, he was saying all stuff from the original, the original trilogy and the prequel trilogy. But I'm like, they're not good. This is like the new stuff. And he's like, oh, so then he was texting his friends and his friends are like, oh, my God, you're there. So they were giving him orders. <laughs> <laughs> um, they did. And I literally Instagram. They were unboxing things at 11. Uh, I started, It was like 1115. Mm. And then a fan helped me. A young, young lady helped me find the Dubak and the Sand Trooper over that was already out on a shelf. So I snagged that one and then waited in line and. And it was like crazy. Literally, the Black Series, like, I turned to get a basket and I looked and the it was it wasn't even midnight, but I guess they didn't stop them and they just 
people grabbed it and there was no mm-hmm. ray. And I, there was three rays there and I was like about in tears. And one of the <gasps> other guys said, you don't, he told the other guy, you don't want that one. She's just a girl. She won't be anything in star Wars. And the guy chucked it back. <gasps> yeah. He put it back on a shelf and I am like, Oh, I am all over that. I was like diving and I'm like, <laughs> I had, I had that and that's what I wanted. <laughs> so right. I achieved, a, uh, achieved that. Then I went home and started shopping online because Smart. everything was coming up. And but you know, there's you have to because they have limited images. They have the ray with the staff, and then they have kind of the gang of them. And then there's you know there's the Kylo image. So I was comparing different like Fifth Son and um, her universe and a bunch of other things to try to pick the one shirt with the ray the way I like. Uh, <laughs> Which one that did was, you go with? Oh, um, I actually got a, the kind of, um, with the retro Ray, I got that one from Fist Sun in a tank. And then I got the, um, the Her Universe. I liked it with the baseball shirt with the resistance because mm-hmm. I like the resistance on it. And then I got a couple BB-8 shirts, which actually the BB-8 I got was the one from the pin from D23. You oh, know, yeah. It says, I think it says join the resistance yes. around BB-8. Yes, it and does. And then I went to Disney store and I got the fig action fi- action figurines the online and i got the ray um which i just got which is gorgeous and then oh, i really? ordered, yeah and hot topic was doing 3 for 2 on funkos so i ordered t- uh the funkos hot topic is a different ray it's special it's exclu- right. exclusive so i got that one Goggles. Goggles, yes, the goggles, the all important goggles. And then I just started like checking out all the things that it was just like, you know, and things are so like CoverGirl just did yes. their beauty force that's supposed to be in stores on the 15th. So I'll go back out and get some of that stuff. I'm excited. And I, every day, different things pop up. I know there's been a lot more costumes showing up. Mm-hmm. Um, and I ordered a Ray staff. It's nice. Be yeah. Cool. K- I think Kay said it's going to be a little too short. It's, it's going to be too short, short for me, but I'm going to see if I can fix it. Yeah. Yeah. But it's it's um, it's um like from Costume Express, but I'm like, I totally, I don't want a lightsaber. I want that staff. That's <laughs> awesome. Wow. Well, I, and, I and forgot the- to say that I actually got the BB-8 plush from the Disneyland store. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah, that's right. I saw the picture of that. Which is amazing. It's gigantic and I love it. Is it, that's what I wanted to know, is it fuzzy or it's is it? It's fuzzy. It's it's fuzzy, but yet you can <laughs> sit it behind you, like, for extra lumbar support if you want. <laughs> or you can hug it. Um, or you can use it as a pillow, sort of. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a firm pillow, you know. But it's, mo- it's mostly, like, to, for, yeah, it's, it's great on your couch. It's, so, it's super <laughs> cute. So did anybody watch the unboxing that went on for 18 hours. I watched a few of it. Yeah. 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 I watched one piece of it. Which, okay, Teresa, which one did you watch? I watched, it just happened to be live and I happened to be awake was when Andy was playing with Sphero BB-8. Oh. And I promptly tweeted at her, damn you. Because <laughs> <laughs> now I wanted to buy one. And so I've been talking myself out of buying one for about a week. <laughs> I, I took I took mine to work today, and which was interesting because there was only one person in my office who knew what it was. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So you you get your perspective on who knows. Where's the Wakens Educational Committee? Yeah, exactly. So yes, I'm spreading the word. I love and, the people who are you meet who are like, oh, there's a new movie coming out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah face palm. They- <laughs> yeah, or they tan- they tangentially know it's coming out, but they they're like, oh, what's that? And they're yeah. like, is that the new Office Rumba? Um, which, by the way, <laughs> he picks up cat lint very well. It just gets Uh-oh. under his head. So I'm oh, just, no. <laughs> I'm Does just his head come off easily. Um, well, no. What I've learned, and this is your tip, is that he ha- you have the magnet is is seated in a certain way when you start him. Mm-hmm. So you have to find the magnet. If you you have to find it and then sit him with that because if you just put it's like the directions just say put his head on. It doesn't say <laughs> it, it's simple. It doesn't say put his head and find the magnet. So I learned this the hard way because the first time the head just went. Bloop, 
off. So you have to find where the magnet is <laughs> <Yeah>. seated. <laughs> so that's my tip. And my other tip is if you have big gray kitties named Isabel that eat things, <laughs> uh, yeah, she was stalking it. So, but yeah, I I watched the I watched the boxing intermittently. I would have loved to have seen. It was very much toy centric. Mm. So the the thing that I wanted to see was literally I tuned in the end and I, plus Andy Gutierrez looked like she was like gonna eighteen hours. They did eighteen Jeez. hours and she was still excited, but she still you know have you ever like done an all nighter and you're like I can do this, but you know it, you know start short circuiting. Yeah, so she, <laughs> you know I was like cheering for her because um, <laughs> she. Just, I can't believe she had to do that for that long. And then they showed, like, they scanned by the shirts and jewelry. And there was, like, a jacket, a fin jacket that I think is in the Disney store. It's at the Disney store. Yeah, so that was, like, all the things that I had wanted to see in the unboxing. So I wish they had seen Because I was, thank you, Jonah, for uh, (laughs) the Wookiee Gunner for actually getting, treating people's screen caps. There were people who were, like, cut screen capping it and I'm like that's the shirt I want that's the shirt I want (laughs) so all those things were like that was really what I wanted to see but um it was it was kind of surreal sometimes like the Korea unboxing for the what was that the um po was it the x-wing x-wing yeah so they were talking and the one girl was talking in Korean and the other girl was talking in English and they were having a conversation with the crowd one in Korean and one in English and then every once in a while the other girl would swap over and so it was literally the most bizarre thing I've ever watched. <laughs> <laughs> so, I watched the Japanese uh, Kylo unboxing and that was they kept switching both of them kept switching in between English and Japanese and they were like uh he looks fearsome um <laughs> Yeah, so it was kind of wild, but it was the one thing that excited me was the first unboxing was the lightsabers, and they had two little girls and their brothers. So Mm -hmm. there was two girls and a boy, and I noticed that they did a really good job of including. um, There were a lot of different people of different races, and then even mix on the gender of who was opening the toys and who was presenting, and you know, obviously it was global, so it was really kind of fun. Well, let's talk about Journey of the Force Awakens just really quick, Um, especially, Sarah, since you were at a book event for Force Friday. Has anybody fully read anything yet? Yes. I think, Trisha, you have. Mm Mm-hmm. I have have not. I have – well, we have a post on Fangirl for the uh, frame stories, which would be the Han, Luke – and Leia stories. And so they're short. They're really easy to read. If you're just looking for something to get into, there's, you know, they're supposed to be middle grade, but they have, they start, the why they're called frame stories is because they start with something closer to Force Awakens and they end there. And then they're relating a story from back in the original trilogy era. Hmm. What, what I, what they're doing is there are ways to introduce to the younger generation who's reading important things about the characters, these characters that they will see now. So they're, and I'm not going to spoil it, but if you read them, you're going to learn something about the importance of these, um, what Han, Han kind of what, it's there's a lot of mystery as to what, uh, you know, Han's in a bar and then he's meeting some people, what, you know, where, what he's really doing. They don't really give that away. I loved it. That was the Greg Rucka. He's also, Greg Rucka also wrote Shattered Empire, which just came out and issue one. And I've always been a fan of his, but all, so all these stories are really easy. And then Lost Stars, I devoured in three days, which is, <laughs> The YA book. And and I had this is literally the book I have been asking for. So Yeah, uh, reading your post and then being halfway through Lost Stars, you know, your most famous post on uh, Fangirl Blog. Yes. Uh, about about wanting a book with romance in it. Yes. Yeah, that's totally halfway through. And yeah, there's definitely romance. <laughs> and this is no it, spoilers. Well, it's I mean, it's a YA book. So it's it works in the conceits of that and it's not drippy mushy. What I'm going to say about Lost Stars is Claudia Gray is um, I've read some of her other stuff. She's a, be- a beautiful writer. She thought really hard about the story. Everybody always talks about, well, you know, Alderaan and you don't see what happened to the 
you don't see the playback. You don't even see Leia get to grieve. Mm. This kind of it goes through all the events you know in Star Wars, but it's these two people, and that are and you know that's in the information. The blurb is that they're both um, from the Empire. They but it builds up their whole home world, and then what happens? They're on one of them's um, stationed on a Star Destroyer. The other one's a type a TIE fighter pilot and what happens when Alderaan explodes and essentially goes on from there through the rest of, you know, you go there at the battle of Endor and then beyond it goes all the way to the battle of Jakku, which is, you know, that's, yeah, yes. So you get a good bit of information here of kind of backstory. If you really want to look, there's some clues and, but it's just this beautiful story about characters. They're, Everyone, there, there is a scene with Mon Mothma that I have been just waiting for somebody to do something as brilliant as what they did with the Mon Mothma in this one little. It humanizes her so much, and you get to see Wedge. Wedge is fantastic. He's just in there for a second. You see Tarkin. Tarkin was brilliant in this, mm. and he's just in there for a second. But it's about these two characters, and they're pilots, so I love it. And <laughs> it is beautifully written. There was. Uh, it's just well thought out. She's a very smart lady. I believe she's a lawyer. And um, she did some really, really clever storytelling stuff. And on top of that, she took tropes that can be, if you think about the story of a, of a, of a woman and a man, and they're working with some tropes, and she's really clever about how she's, there's all, the characters always have agency. They're always making choices that are believable. And the farther they get apart, the closer they're getting together. So it's just kind of mm-hmm. really, I'm like, thank you, thank you, thank you. So I'm loving it. And I'm I'm in Aftermath. You know, there's been a lot of controversy about Aftermath because people are just, have been throwing one stars at it for, because they want legends back. And mm-hmm. that's probably a conversation for another time, but throwing one stars at a book to try to make people write something else is not the way to do it. Um, it's just a, it's a, he's a different style than what we're used to because book readers in Star Wars are not used to present tense, hmm. and um, and it's but he's he's doing it's taken me to about page seventy to really care about the characters as opposed to Lost Stars where I was totally invested really early on, but it's an easy read and I think it'll be a, you know a good addition to Star Wars too and I like Chuck Wendick so. That's that's my feedback on reading. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, I'm I'm halfway through Lost Stars, but I'm I, I like to savor my books. So I plan to read all all of these uh, Force Awakens books or Journey to the Force Awakens novels. But I, I'm going to take my time and play a little Disney and Infinity in between. Well, you have that luxury. <laughs> when you do a books podcast, you do not. Ah, yes. So, what have you read so far, Teresa? Um, the prologue of Lost Stars. Oh, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's about it. Well, here's the thing. For those people who don't listen to Star Wars Bookworms, which is the book podcast that I do with my co-host Aaron Goins, plug, we are a little bit behind. We got behind because of summer, you know, and he's got two little munchkins and things like that. So we still have to re- um, record our review of Dark Disciple. Mm. So we've got to do that and before we can really jump into Journey to the Force Awakens. So we're a little bit, you know, on, you know, on the backside of it. But I say this is a good thing. And the reason being, everybody is going to be plastering people with reviews of Aftermath and Lost Stars right now. So Mm. since we're a little bit behind, once they get through with being overwhelmed by all the other people... There we are. Well, you, uh, you know, it's nice a relaxing conversation. And it might be too, because when people, when the movie comes out, like around December, people will see the movie and they want to read more. It yeah. might even be like a good time because people are going to be back Googling and looking see? for people talking. See, That's so it was what so- I've been saying, say I plotted this all over, you know, before the summer started, actually we'll start with like in March when we started getting behind. And that's what I was thinking. See, there you go. I'm getting then, behind for Journey to the Force Awakens <laughs> on purpose. See, and then for people like me who like to take their time and savor their books, well, that that you have until December. Ex- yeah. Well, Star Wars Bookworms is your place, Sarah. See, there we you go. Designed it just for people like. <laughs> I love it. 
<laughs> you're savoring. <laughs> and Kay, have you read anything or you didn't even get to read anything? I haven't gotten a chance to read anything yet. No. Yeah. Well, oh, when, of I'm, yeah, I'm eagerly awaiting because we will definitely talk about the, the hints and clues that you can find in. They're all mm-hmm. spread out. They're in. And we'll do that in a hyperspace series, so we won't spoil people. But there is definitely you'd have to read them all to. Um, well, even even with the merchandise too, we've gotten so many little bits of information here and there. And there's a lot of stuff out there now. If you want to collect it all and put it all together, <laughs> <laughs> if you want to put it all, as J.J. Abrams said, if you want to see all the clues, you can. And if you just want to be enjoying the fact that we're going to have a. Star Wars movie, you can do that too. <laughs> you know, I didn't believe him when he said that. I was like, there's not really much out there, but now there is. There definitely yeah. is. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 definitely there's a lot more out there. So I'm I'm I'll look forward to your bookworms reviews to those discussions. Well, they should be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so what was your like favorite thing to happen at Dragon Con? Oh dear. Oh, I mean, because I know that you at least had a moment where you were um, you were Star Wars famous on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yay! Still, describe still rippling out. So, as you guys mentioned, I uh, I do cosplay and I've done Ray since Celebration, and I've upgraded the costume since then, and I wore it to Dragon Con, and I heard there was a fin there, Ooh. and I was like, I have to find him, and I was. People are sending me photos of him, and he had a spray bottle with him, so he could spray his face and look all sweaty, like Finn does in <laughs> everything we've seen. Oh, my God. So when people would That's ask for a bad. photo, he would, like, spray his face and then be like... <gasps> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> wow. And I was like, I have to find this guy. And uh, we finally found him, and we had a Daisy and John level, like, freak out. <laughs> Oh. He was like, I haven't found any rays yet. And I was like, you're my first spin. Yeah. Did, did he see you coming? Like, like, or did you just like walk up and like, hey. We just like all of a sudden ran into each other. It was oh. so crowded. It's hard to see people. And then all of a sudden they were, there we both were in front of each other. Wow. And so we took a photo together and I tweeted it out. And this it will, got this a little popular. Will, this will be a little like less and less common. But Kay and I are actually running around Celebration trying to find Kylo Ren. Yes. And that was like a big adventure. But the problem, and it might still be a problem, is every time we would start to get moving forward, somebody <laughs> would stop us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So this is a cosplay problem. You have to yeah, you yes. have to sort of plan for that. Um, extra. It also depends on what show you're at because they like I've been to shows where not a lot of people know anything about the new movie, mm. so I don't get stopped a lot. But then the I, thing I, with cosplay is you can parlay your your cosplay famousness into getting further up in the line. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I've done I don't that know before. about that. <laughs> <laughs> just just walk walk back from the front of the line and anyone who asks for your picture go, okay, hi, well, friend. <laughs> Can I join did, the line? Yeah, she did talking. get into pose with the speeder earlier than yeah? everybody else at Celebration. Yes. So, yeah, yeah, there you go. Cause cause he's, <laughs> that was like, I was still overwhelmed by the show and taking it all in. And then he was like, come over here. And I was like, what? What? <laughs> and then I went to go stand in line. He was like, no, you do not stand in line. Oh. <laughs> That was fun. Um, I I saw that there was um, what they had Vanessa Marshall and Peter Mayhew on yes. a panel together. Yes, that panel happened three times. I was oh. only able to go to it once, so I I'm guessing it was a little different each time. Uh, but it was funny because you know, Vanessa's well, Vanessa said her favorite character is Chewy, and oh. so she was kind of freaking out a little to be able to sit next to him. That's oh, awesome. Man. What was the panel I know about? What that looks like. It was well they their theme was like piloting against the Empire since both their characters are pilots, but it was like just a general talking about, you know, how they got into Star Wars, some of their stories and you know, then their audience questions at the end. So Nice. I, ha- I have to say P- Peter Mayhew's been winning with the tweets yeah. for the past like week here he did he had took bb8 with them and tweeted on the way and then yeah he tweeted what um star wars isn't what was it it was prince princess leia and it said star wars is just for boys and 
um, uh, I can't remember what it said on the bottom, but it was just so funny. It was like, yeah, look at this lady with their, her blaster. Well, I'll just, I'll just be cleaning out my blaster over here. Yes, or that's like. what it said. That was awesome. So he's been winning it. <laughs> when it came to the Q&A part, he was just like rapid fire, on fire. Like people, someone said, um, Oh, they were like, oh, in the, you know, when they rebuilt the Millennium Falcon for The Force Awakens, you know, did they get it right? Did they get it down to a T? And he was like, no, it's usually, you know, flat and round shaped. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. And then he was like, next question. Are That's you, really, really good. Are you going to go back? You think you'll, you'll go I back? I think so. I think so. I think I, you know, by the last day, I finally kind of knew where everything was. <laughs> that is the thing about Dragon Con because it's so spread out with all the different yeah. hotels. There was um, a Force Awakens evolution of the costume panel I really wanted to get to, and I almost missed it because of a conga line of Deadpools. Oh, <laughs> oh. yep. <laughs> now, also at Dragon Con K, you, there was a Kathleen Kennedy Day, right? Yes. It was interesting, too, because some people were like, why are you dressed up as a real person? <laughs> And why did you dress up as a real person, Kate? Because Kathleen Kennedy is awesome. <laughs> so people dressed up with the Star Wars, uh, her universe shirt, yes. right? And then and a, a white, white jacket. Or a cardigan or something of the sort. Yeah, and jeans <laughs> and dark shoes. That's yeah. awesome. That's aw- <laughs> how, About how many people? Oh, um, there was probably, I would say maybe 18 or 20. Nice. Wow. D- and did did you get any response from Kathleen Kennedy? Like, did you guys tweet or anything like that? We we tweeted about it, and and I know the Star Wars dot com people were uh, oh were like, yeah, send us photos. But I haven't heard anything beyond that. Oh. Okay. Okay. Hopefully, she gets to see it, even if we never hear from her. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I hope she sees it and is like, oh, that's awesome. and hopefully not like that's weird. No, well, are those little people that the little minions that go through all the social media and put yes. important things in front of Ka- of the executives? I hope that got to Kathleen Kennedy. So, um, yeah, minions who who monitor social media, <laughs> pass it along. <laughs> we were so we are all so excited to do it, and it got so hot in there though. That one point, I had to take my blazer off. I'm like, no, now no one will know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> we cosplay real people. Yes. As Kay said on the Hyperspace series when we talked about Kathleen Kennedy's sort of influence in her career and stuff like that, that was our thing. Like, Kathleen Kennedy gets stuff done. Yes. So <laughs> She's an inspiration. <laughs> she's a, <laughs> And she's, she's a, you know, we don't know for certain, but she's probably a big reason behind a lot of the stuff we're excited about right now. Yep. Mm-hmm. I, I, let me tell you, I had mad, crazy love for her when she went, stood up there at Celebration. She's like, nope, there haven't been enough women in Star Wars, but we're going to change that. Princess Leia was kind of the only game. But I, I'm going to say that that's going to change. As you can see. Wow. Tell me about expanding. And really strong women, and not only in Episode 7, but the conversations we, we're having moving forward, there are going to be a lot of wonderful new characters. Yeah. That's her essentially her giving her mission statement there, you know, to s- put her word out there and say something like that. Because mm-hmm. it's pretty much followed. She doesn't talk a lot, but when she does, you usually see the results of that. What she says will happen. So, right. And that followed by the poster that came out of D23 Expo. Yeah, it was pretty yeah. clear. We're on a path. <laughs> We're on a path. <laughs> but remember, guys. She's not going to be anything in Star Wars, so you don't need to buy her figure. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it worked. It worked out for me. Yep. It worked out yeah. for me. That's the only. That's the only reason it's okay. <laughs> See, I would have been the person that would have grabbed it in had would have done the Julia Roberts thing and walked up to the guy and been like, <laughs> "Big mistake. Big, huge." <laughs> oh, I love it, <laughs> Teresa. What I did is I went home and I put in my Disney Infinity and I put on my Ahsoka with her two lightsabers Ugh. and I got some battle droids and I was like, dude in the store. <laughs> 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 and there's nothing cooler than the slow-mo when Ahsoka like yes. goes slow-mo Wah! right before she kills the last droid. I so. love it. And so for anybody listening, I'm highly (laughs) encouraging you to use this hashtag when you're talking about merchandise. Hashtag Ray sells. Ray sells. Yes. (laughs) 
Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure there was Finn still swinging on the peg, yep. but no Ray. Pretty yep. sure. Every store we went to, there was one Finn action figure left. Every <laughs> store. Uh, yeah. And nothing well, else. They all, all realized in the end that they wanted the fins and rays. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't think that any of us are going to New York Comic Con, right? No, none nope. of us are going. I, I, yeah, I, there's a reason I won't be there because I'll be at another con. But it seems like Sarah Michelle Geller put up her little blog post Ooh. that I saw on her husband, Freddie Prince Jr.'s Twitter feed, uh, just talking about Star Wars and um, that. She was excited to be a part of it and that the – essentially, I like the tone of her post because I've said that Sarah Michelle Geller would be kind of a gateway to get some of the – how would I say? Geek feminists who have been a little skeptical of Star Wars over the years to kind of get on board and say, let's be excited about this because they, you know, they really like her from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So she wrote a nice, really nice post about it, which I will put in the show notes, just talking about Star Wars and how it's looking so awesome for women and the characters. And then she says, I think I'll be going to New York Comic Con. And I'm like, dude. So Aww. Yeah. So people who are going to be at New York Comic Con, just watch out because I think we're going to see some excitement you know for her you know hinting about that so I'm really excited about that but Kay and I will actually be in Seattle at GeekroCon doing the Star Wars panel mm -hmm. that same weekend and also the I'm really excited about the Heroine's Journey panel again too which was like crazy good last time it was yeah. that was one of those moments where you like go and you think okay we're up against the costumes and uh, contest and there'll be some people in there and it's packed so we have the same team back to talk about the heroine's journey. So I'm s and maybe get to talk a little bit because there's Ray in the center of the poster from D20. So <laughs> you know, the possibility for that. And so I'm excited. I'm, this next month's going to be crazy. So it'll be a crazy month. Count me in. So we want to wish a happy birthday. It's going to be a little late to Sandra, who's does our awesome Instagram and has been getting these Friday fans up on our Facebook and Instagram, which we love because I was, I, when that went, that notice went up, like people who want to be our fan Friday, like all of a sudden all our notifications go, I'm like, what's going on? What's going on? And then like checking direct messages. And we had so many, uh, literally so many messages that people wanted to be that fan Friday. So that, I mean, there's so many people, but we want to wish her a happy birthday. I think it was a, a one of those momentous birthdays too for her. It was so. her big 40th. Yes. Mm. So. <laughs> Yay, so, happy, happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> and we're not going to sing the song because then we'd have to pay somebody. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'll, I'll add some music. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday from the dark side. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> How about there that? you go. Even better. Well, we uh, also, Trisha, before we move on, because this is for you, we also wanted to wish you a happy five. Yes. Five. Five yeah. year anniversary to Fangirl blog, the website. Do you feel as if you've accomplished anything? I, I absolutely feel like I've accomplished something. There's <laughs> Ray standing in the middle of a poster. I am not the person who did that, but I am one of thousands of voices, thousands and thousands of voices asking for that. That would be fanboys and fangirls. And so thank you for whatever little angel made George Lucas decide to ask Kathleen Kennedy and for her to say mm -hmm. yes. And for all the little people who ever hired Claudia Gray. But I think all those all those voices, you you have to ask for what you want in fandom. And that's what I did. I, I found a fangirl blog to ask for what I wanted in fandom. And I feel like... Force Friday and the resulting week has um, all the struggles and all the writing has paid off. Yeah, we did it! 
And I did a mission statement when I started, and I think that's important to do a blog. And I'm rejiggering that mission statement because we're going in the right direction. And so I'll put that up on my September 22nd, kind of where I want to keep Fangirl Blog going. But I'm so crazy, happy, excited so about that. Oh. So thank you. Yay. Well, Sarah, I think we have some social media shout outs. We do, we do. Yeah. You know what? Wait, we wait. had. What? Wait. Roll it, Rob Dellinger. Shout it out, shout it out to the social media from Teresa and Trisha and Sarah. Shout it out, shout it out, fangirl shout outs. <laughs> Yay. Okay, now you can do it. <laughs> All right. Well, yes. So on Force Friday and a couple days after, we had some people tweeting out some pictures. And I, I love this tweet from Arthur Frazine, who is at Art Frazine on Twitter. And uh, he tweets a picture of his little baby daughter, little baby fangirl, looking at a new BB-8, the Sphero BB-8. And he says, Sasha is enjoying her new pal. And it's just adorable. So... We know that BB-8 is getting around to even the youngest generation. So I thought I've was- got so many people just tweeting at me or sending me messages of their daughters with stuff. It's, oh! crazy. it's just like crazy, all the things. And then Daisy really tweeted the or Instagrammed the picture of all the little girls in their Ray yeah. outfits. I, that like me, I know. Kay, I've seen her get teary eyed about <laughs> little girls in costumes. So I, you know, it's kind of like you want to hug them all and go, oh, you little girls, you just don't even know. Your it's kids. just it's so exciting because Star Wars was such a big deal to me when I was a kid. And, and they're going to get to do this with Ray. And that's just really cool. I'm happy to see them, you know, being girls and being excited about Star Wars, not being afraid to be. Yeah. And Hera and Sabine and. All sorts of other cool characters that I'm sure whatever Sarah Michelle Geller is, whoever she is. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Wow. And then I have one more tweet from Disney Toy Sisters who tweeted out, my girls got to open the Disney store on Force Friday using the Force. And there's a <laughs> video of this happening. And this is just amazing. It's like the cutest thing ever. <laughs> That they were, they're learning, they're learning how to use the force. Mm -hmm. It was exciting. (laughs) Yeah, we just love, we love when people tweet at us and you can always tweet at us at FG going rogue and tweet us your pictures of your fangirls and fanboys and yourself enjoying Star Wars. We love it. Oh, we totally do. So we talked earlier about our fangirl chat about Disney Infinity and also it was a little bit of build up to Force Friday. So if you guys check that out. It's fun. And while we were doing that, we were going through who was voicing the characters on the Disney Infinity. And we realized that Anna Graves was doing Princess Leia. Mm -hmm. And I reached out to Jimmy Mack and said, hey, and he said, I know her. And we scored the most awesome interview with her. And she's not just the voice of Princess Leia. She's also the voice of Duchess Satine from the Clone Wars and many other things. So, but maybe we'll listen to the interview because you'll get to hear all the different things that she voices. And it was kind of amazing. She's an amazing fangirl and voice actress. Anna Graves, welcome to Fangirls Going Rogue. We're so excited to have you. Thank you, ladies. It's good to be going rogue. (laughs) (laughs) We're fans already. Man, stop it. (laughs) So, have you always been a Star Wars fan? Because that's that's one of the things, you know, you get to (laughs) act in Clone Wars. We just, we have to know that. Yes, I am pleased to say that I have always been a Star Wars fan. I, you know, I was born in 1978. I had a brother who was eight years older than me. And, um, yeah, I got my Ewoks for Christmas, which I still have my stuffed Ewoks. And I played with his action figures because my parents wouldn't buy me my own. Um, You know, we already had them. But um, I don't think I ever had a Leia figure, though. I never had a Leia. I need to buy a Leia. 
Oh my goodness. You need to buy the Leia Disney Infinity figure. I yeah, do. I know. I know. Well, and it's so funny because you know the thing that's been holding me up with that is I'm trying to decide if I should purchase a new platform because I've had my mm-hmm. I've had my PS3 for years. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe now's the time to, you know, change it up. Let's what, what about an Xbox? What about a PS4? I don't know. Maybe I and so I've been on the fence about that and I haven't bought my yet. Uh, well, my game yet. Ter- Teresa may tell you there's a Ewok reason why you should level up. <laughs> yeah. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me Teresa. Do that. There is well, you need to get a PS4. Because, I mean, you can get an Xbox One, but since you already have PlayStation, you need to get a PS4. Because only on the PS4 and Xbox do you get Unlock the Ewok Village. Oh, okay. See? See? This is what I needed to know. There you <laughs> We're go. big Disney Infinity fans. We play yes. nonstop. Yes, we discovered that you needed the PS4 or the Xbox One to get that Ewok Village because Teresa and I were texting, and I'm like, where's my Ewok Village? And I don't have either of those platforms. (laughs) See, the less information you know, the more extras will slip through your fingers. You did that very well. That was really good. Oh, thank you. You know, the funny thing about doing Princess Leia is I... I was sent an audition, Dara O'Farrell, who does uh, Star Wars, The Old Republic. He was looking for a Leia, um, this was like three years ago, for an app for a pinball game. And they sent me this audition and I was like, ooh, yeah, yeah. And I did it and I sent in the audition and I was feeling pretty good about it. And I didn't hear anything and I was like, well, damn. Uh, But then, (laughs) too much to my... Surprise, her, her did hear back, and I ended up going in, and I, I was the voice of Princess Leia in the, um, the Zen version of uh, the Star Wars pinball game. So if you play the pinball app, you can hear me as Leia on that as well. And then Dara was kind enough to call me in to do some stuff on the Old Republic, so I did a couple of different roles on the Old Republic. Uh, and then I got the call in February that they wanted to just book me for this game. And, and it was going to be Leia. And I was like, all right, cool. And then I didn't know what it was until I got into the studio. And they said it was the new Disney Infinity game. And I was, you know, oh, I was so happy. <laughs> <laughs> you have to act like cool. Like, yeah, this is just work, oh, right? <laughs> God, you, ha- you have to be really cool. And it was cool because Dara wasn't there. He was just on the phone. So the, the engineer, though, he sees me jumping up and down and like, you know, mm-hmm. during the breaks, I'm like running out of the bath, you know, running to the bathroom. And I was just like, oh, my God, I'm so excited. Isn't this awesome? And then I get back on the phone. I was like, hey, so where are we at? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the funny thing is, is out of the three of us, I'm the one who got the set where I have the Rise Against the Empire playset already. So I've been playing as Leia um, for the past few days. And I have nice. been leveling her up, and I love playing as her. She has so much sass. It's awesome. So <laughs> you did a wonderful job with her voice. It's great. Oh, sweet. Thank you. Thank you. You know, Carrie Fisher had a lot of oomph. She had a lot of sass going on in episode four. And then in episode five, it was that, you know, showing that vulnerability and that softer side, but keeping that good tension with her and Han. So I, I think I was definitely... And since they went with the classic look of Leia anyway from episode four with the, the white dress and the, and the buns, um, it, felt, it felt like it fit. So I'm so happy to hear that it worked. <laughs> so thank you. Yeah, all, playing with all those, I, they got me hooked. I was, I'm not a video <laughs> gamer, so they, they're guilty of drawing me in. But I was already a fan of yours because you play another of my favorite characters, Satine from The Clone Wars. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. Duchess Satine was probably one of my very favorite characters that I've had the pleasure of playing. Oh, that was so cool. I was like getting the chills. I know. (laughs) You know, I always felt I actually, um, I was one of the writers on Ultimate Star Wars and the Clone Wars was my area. So I was getting the list of names. I'm like, yes, I got Satine. And (laughs) And, you know, it was so funny because you're like, I can't fit all the, like, feels I have about the character because she's just, you know, she's misunderstood a little bit. But, you know, she's true to what she believes. And so I I don't know. how Do you, do you look back fondly on that character? Why was she your favorite? 
Oh, I look back very fondly. I, I feel honored personally for, for getting to, I mean, personally, you know how <laughs> it's so mm-hmm. funny. Cause when you talk about star Wars, like it's such a big, I was talking to somebody about this a few, well, I'll just tell you it's the editor who does the trailers for okay. star Wars. He, cool. he is the man who put that beautiful episode trailer out there for everyone <sighs> to see. Right. And I was just asking him, I was like, dude, you're not on Twitter. I said, you will get attacked. And he's like, well, I can't talk about anything, you know? And I said, no, no, no. But people will, they like to, you know, tell you good job and they enjoy your work and thank you. And I I said, I I get it. I said, I told him, I said, Star Wars is a beach and you are a tiny pebble, you know, on the beach. You are a grain of sand, you know, like in the world of that is Star Wars. So when you get to take part in that just a little bit, it's a, it's amazing, especially when, you know, George Lucas is like, all right, let's elaborate on this character. Like, here's this character that we've created for Duchess Satine. Uh, and they originally wrote one episode. And then they looked at it after they recorded it. And they were like, you know what? Let's stretch this out. Let's make it an arc. Um, let's really explore that Mandalorian world. Let's really um, explore Obi-Wan and Satine's relationship. And so the fact that I got to be a little part of that story was really, really amazing. Yeah. Speaking about that, you know, even though it's a cartoon, like Obi-Wan and Satine have such chemistry together. And I'm just wondering, did you and James Arnold Taylor record like in studio together to get that? Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We were always in the same room. And um, James, first of all, is very talented and very intuitive um, and very aware of other people in the scene with him. So each time we would run the scene, it would have a different, you know, just a little different flavor. Like it would, sometimes it would be sweet. Sometimes it would be sarcastic. Sometimes it would be, you know, uh, it just it depended on what Dave Filoni wanted and what we ended up happening. Yeah, it's not it's not always that easy. He made it feel easy. Way to go, James. <laughs> like, yeah, acting in those scenes with him, he he made it easy. So. Oh, and then another one of your characters was Shuggy that you got to play too. So you went from like this, you know, noble woman with high <laughs> lofty ideals to yeah. uh, I call her the mercenary with heart. So she was always doing yes. the right thing. Yes. It's so funny because when I read the description about Sugi, uh, Dave was like, well, she's a Zabrak you know, character. And I was like, Zabrak, Zabrak. I was like, well, what do you mean? And he was like, well, look. And he showed me some pictures of Zabrak, you know, that race with the horns. And I was like, oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. And he's like, he's, she's like, Dar- you know, Darth Maul, basically, almost of the same. Um, isn't Darth Maul? What is yes. his yes. background? He's a he- Zabrak, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. So uh, it was interesting when we started talking about her layers and her character and what he wanted her to sound like. And then we kind of ended up with this Middle Eastern kind of tough um, mercenary who just, you know, she's just working for the paycheck, but she definitely has a lot of heart. (laughs) Well, in case you didn't know, those two characters are digital cards on the Star Wars card trading app. So you can collect yourself (laughs) as a card if you wanted to. I don't know. I would kind of feel a guilty pleasure doing that. I'd be like, yeah, just collected myself right there. There you go. You know, going going forward, are you excited to share this kind of Star Wars experience with your, your kids? Like that you, you get to relive it again, almost like your childhood? I am. And it is. Yes, it is. Because my kids, they're, oh, they're five and a half and two and a half. And for all you moms and dads out there, no matter what, you know, you're into and what your passion is, like when they see that you like something, they, they 100% jump into it. Mm -hmm. So, um, like we were out of town this weekend and I think I put on Twitter, like, you know, family, hotel room, iPad, Bose speakers and, and episode four, like that's all you need. Like it was amazing. We're all crowded together on the bed and watching episode four and it was kind of late, and my daughter just said, you know, Mom, can we watch until the garbage part? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I said, all right, we can watch until the garbage part. And then so we turned it off after that, and we just kept, you know, saying, what an incredible smell you discovered over and over again. And, uh, you know, they quote the lines, and my son, oh, my God, he's so cute. He's just like, he's got the theme songs down. He can switch from Luke to Darth Vader music. 
and he's definitely the musician in the family. So he, he'll wake up in the morning and saying, bad guys, I hit the bad guys, Darth Vader. And then he starts breathing and doing the songs. And <laughs> I, I relish in those things. Those things make me smile throughout the day. It's good stuff. We always ask, what does being a fangirl mean to you? So uh, getting to share that with your kids and everything, like what, what does being a fan of Star Wars mean to you? Yeah, I think I think that that is exactly what it is. I think everybody is their own type of fan. So whether you're, um, you you know, you gravitate toward all of the music, that's your 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 fandom coming out in you. So, or maybe you collect figures, or maybe you collect autographs, and you enjoy meeting the people. And everybody has their own their own fandom and their own way of expressing it. And I think I think that's mine. Yeah, I think that is mine because I. I've always enjoyed watching movies. I watched a lot of movies with my dad, you know, quoted films with him and was always imitating the characters, which I think is what I do now. I, I just, you know, I'm just imitating something that has already been created and, and uh, putting my own little spin on it. Have you ever worn the buns? Have I already? Have I ever worn the buns? Yeah. Have you ever done your hair in the buns? We, you know, I did when I was little, but I never full out like I never got extensions and made them look <laughs> authentically Leia. So that's a good. I should do that going forward. I mean, there's a there's clearly an opportunity for a good trick or treat night happening here with the growing <laughs> family and the, <laughs> the, the, the <laughs> options of of costumes. I took my kids to celebration. We just went, you know, one day just to kind of go check it out. And my daughter had her cute little her universe, um, you know, T-shirt on that said Jedi in training. And she was just so excited. She was so uh, it's also overwhelming for them, like conventions and things like that are more for adults. So um, kind of got to ease them into that stuff. But but yes, there will be some costuming coming up. So I promise I, I shall try to fashion some buns. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the other questions that we always ask is what do you think is the most underrated or underappreciated thing about Star Wars? I don't know. I, I don't know if it would be something as, as simple as saying, oh, the characters that you don't like and people saying, oh, why did they, you know, I, I, I like I heard a little bit of a podcast that somebody sent me a copy of and the guys were saying, man, why'd they put Jar Jar Binks in the game, you know? And it's like, Aww. that character doesn't, it doesn't float my boat or whatever. It's, it's, you know, maybe it doesn't have to, you know what I mean? Like, you don't have to knock it either. You don't have to, you don't have to, you can still appreciate it, but not like it. You, you, can, you can still not like it, but you can still appreciate it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Appreciate, like, there are plenty of people who were very upset about Duchess Satine. And it was like, what? Why would a Mandalorian be a pacifist? That's ridiculous. <laughs> so you don't have to agree with it. You just have to appreciate what it is because it's Star Wars. <laughs> oh. So have you gotten a chance to watch any of Rebels? Yes. Yes. And... Uh, Oh my gosh, it's so good. It's so good. I love the animation. I love the writing. My kids have only seen three episodes of it. Mm. So we kind of started at the beginning and we're making our way forward with that because I wanted to watch, you know, the episodes before I let them watch it because they're still very young. Mm-hmm. So excellent. excellent. How do you show. feel about Sabine since she's well, a Mando? <laughs> I think I and see right now I've got a little man waving his lightsaber at me and going, ha ha lightsaber. <laughs> Dude, what's up? Thank you. Um, I'm afraid he's going to break someone. Here you go. Take it that way. There you go. <laughs> We're not in our house and there's glass here. Oh. <laughs> uh, you know what? Sabine, I think that is really interesting that they've made her a Mando and I – I I love it. I think that each of those, you know, crew members comes from a different background and uh she just she just she adds the Mando flair, that's for sure. Not to mention <laughs> that her helmet's cool. Come on. <laughs> it's the pink. So Anna, just where can people find you so they can share their love of Satine or <laughs> Leia when they're playing Disney Infinity? Because I, I'm looking forward to getting the the sass. I want to. That's what I want to 
to nice. be, you know, I, I have a couple more weeks, I think, till everybody can get her character. So, uh, well, if you're on Facebook, you can come to uh, Anna Graves voice actor is my uh, voice actor page. And then on Twitter, I'm at Gravy Voice, G-R-A-V-Y Voice. That's an Yay. excellent, excellent name. Yeah. Do yeah, you have anything? You. Do you have anything coming up that you'd want our listeners to know about to look for you? I don't. Not that I can. Not, not that I can mention. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm. I'm. I'm a, a voice actor that's happy to be working, and most of the things that I work on are not animation or or video game related. Most of the time, it's you know, um, ADR lines or. Um, I just did some IHOP commercials last week and I'm going in this week to do some IHOP radio. You know, I'm happy that I'm, that I'm just working and I do K jewelers commercials. So if you, especially around the holidays, um, I do all the Christmas and mother's day and Valentine's day. Every kiss does begin with K. Save up to 30% on select diamonds and rhythm. The center diamond constantly moves, catching light from every angle at K, the number one jewelry store in America. What else? Oh, sci-fi. If you hear a chick on sci-fi. That's me. Oh, wow. Awesome. Oh, nice. yeah. I, I saw you did, you had Disney Nature on your website. Yeah, I did. Um, I, I've done some pieces for Disney Nature on uh, what was the Disney Nature film? Oceans. Uh, there was a little oh. 10 minute video that's included on the Blu ray. Yes. There's, and you can hear me narrating because they, there's just a lot of um, Disney does a lot of conservation work. Those moments we experience life on this planet are a gift. A gift we believe belongs to every child around the world, today and for generations to come. And I did, I did like some, you know, like before they have narrators come in, like before they have Meryl Streep come in, mm. you know, they have someone like me come in and temp stuff. Um, and before, it's, sometimes it's jobs like that that nobody hears. Yep. Nobody it never goes to finish, you know, but you get paid to be there. That's awesome. awesome. Yeah, there well, you every go. T- every time we see a K Jewelers ad, <laughs> and hopefully they'll have some Star Wars ones because they yeah. do have Star Wars stuff now. So, oh. so, yes, yes, they do. K, the number one jewelry store in America. Do you, do you have to say a kiss begins with K? Or is that song? I don't. I wish. You know, they always have the jingle people who come in and do jingles. And I am a singer. And I've thought about several times trying to get in with someone who does jingles. But I, uh, I've never, I've never uh, pursued that career. So if anyone out there is listening and they need an extra jingler, I am an alto first soprano. Nice. Ooh, even more awesome. Well, Anna... Thank you so much. We'll let you get back to your little Jedi in training. <laughs> Thank you. He's so wicked cute right now. I'm going to take a picture and I will send it to just uh, you because I'm not going to post that on Twitter. Awesome. <laughs> and, and we so appreciate your time. This was lovely. Thank you, guys. I mean, ladies. Thank you, girls. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, fangirls. It was really good to talk to you. And hopefully I'll have something else to chat about that is superhero related or Star Wars related in the future and we will chat some more. Well, we just had a good girl time there. I loved it. (laughs) It was really fun. It was, she's so down to earth. I didn't really know what to expect. I mean, we've talked to lots of different voice actors and stuff like that, but she was very, very fun. Voice actors are cool. Voice actors rock. Well, you know what? You just I I can't even. Um, it was kind of freaking me out. Like she could. You just say, "Oh, we're going to talk about this character," and she could go right into that voice. Yeah. yeah. That's. I mean, we know James Arnold Taylor does that, and we're sort of all. I mean, you just think maybe he's like special that he and he <laughs> is. He is because he can do like a hundred in two hundred the- voices in an hour. <laughs> in an hour, so it's like crazy that he can and you can he can make you realize how they all sort of sound. You know where he's getting them from. You know how they are similar, but um, just crazy talented and. I feel like they just hire the nicest people to, to yes, work. Yes, absolutely. I I totally second that motion. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone I've talked to from the the Star Wars universe is just uh, they're just so nice. It's like something must be something in the blue milk. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. So wait, I think we need to have Rob Dellinger roll it again. Absolutely.
Sidious, Anakin, Luke and Leia, Qui-Gon Jinn, C.O. Bibble, Kylo Ren, Salacious Crumb, Bib Fortuna, Boba Fett, Amadala Wicked, R2-D2, BB-8, I can barely keep it straight. It's a character discussion. It's the fangirls on character. It's a character discussion. All right. So for this character discussion, we decided that we were going to look at the Force Awakens characters we're most excited about, but we got a little bit more specific. Specifically, what male characters we're most excited about. We like talking about our pilots and stuff. Um, I'm sorry, Trisha. Wait, that's you. I like talking about my dark side, guys. Um, but it was interesting. So um, Trisha put out this challenge to us for, for us all to pick two that we were most excited about. And I was like, well, wait, there's like three and that's it. <laughs> right. Um, so who do we, who are we going to pick? There's so more than three. I, well, four. You, you could pick, you, there's actually, there I can are. think of five. Yeah. Okay. Well, if we're, I was thinking new characters. I wasn't seeing. I'm, okay. oh. characters. I'm talking about new characters too. Okay. Maybe I'm just If you lost. added old, there's even more. Well, who should we start with? I wrote mine down, so I get dips. <laughs> <laughs> you get to go. You get your, your first one. We'll rotate. Teresa, do your first one. Okay, so I was having a really hard time with this because I was thinking, you know, well, I know Trisha loves Poe, you know, and I love, I know that Sarah loves Han, and I was thinking, I don't really love anybody. <laughs> so I'm like, who oh, am I going to pick? So I decided that I would go away from my traditional route. And I picked Finn for my first one. Not because I have a crush on Finn, but because I'm really interested in, like, what is going on with him? Like, why is he a stormtrooper <laughs> slash not a stormtrooper? Where did he get the cool jacket from? Did he go to the store? <laughs> also, um, does he really have the force? Does he not have the force? Did he just find that on the ground and picked it up and it just happened to be convenient? So I'm just trying to figure out what's going on with this dude. And why, why is does he, he so distressed all the time? Yes. Why is he so sweaty and hot? <laughs> oh, why is he a uh, bottle? You know why? Yeah. I know why. Our, because he carries a water bottle around with him. Yeah. <laughs> Our friend at the show wants there to be a Finn action figure that you squeeze and he sweats. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. That would be sort of awesome, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so and so he shouldn't be peg warming then right he he should no. be here's what i think happened i think the girls were the girl characters were all going very quick um mm-hmm. phasma and ray were both gone i think hasbro made more of finn and this is going to sound terrible okay but it's true it's just the way society is i teach about this i think they made more of finn because this is one of the few predominantly african-american characters in star wars and so i think they made more for those political reasons um so he just has to happens to be peg warming along with that other dude that kind of looks like imbo with the little hat i don't know what his name is oh he's the one that no yeah nobody knows who he is so they're just like yeah. huh. but I, but there are a lot of people this to be fair there are a lot of people who still don't know anything about the the new movies we're so ingrained in sort of that we know stuff that we forget that there are mm-hmm. people who just don't know who he is and so maybe he'll be there and when the movie comes out then everybody will want a, i love john boy he have you guys seen attack Great. the block yes it's, no uh, yeah you should get that movie it's i mean it's so british sci-fi but he he in that movie he is so endearing and he actually did an interview where he said he was at bad robot and ran into jj abrams this is before the force awakens and jj abrams had acknowledged him said he loved him and attacked the block and would find something for him wow and, oh, yeah that's awesome you have to watch it because if you see him in that movie you could see totally the guy standing there with the lightsaber yeah i was gonna say that you could totally see him picking up a lightsaber I love him as a person so far with what we've seen, but I'll be perfectly honest with you. I don't want to watch anything that he's been in. And the reason I don't want to do that is because I want my first experience with some of these actors, like the new ones, to be what they are in Star Wars. So, like, I've never seen Adam Driver in anything. 
I've never seen Gwendolyn Christie in anything because I don't watch Game of Thrones. So <laughs> my first experience with like these main four is going to be who they are in Star Wars. Now, are you going to the, see the a Mockingjay? I was going to say she's mm. going to see Gwendolyn there. Is she in that? Yes. yes. Who is she in that? It's the commander of one of the districts that they go of District Eight that they go in and mm. and yeah. Well, the so. the big question is, will she be taking her? Her helmet off. So. Yep. Yep. <laughs> with a fabulous look underneath. <laughs> with some with some uh covergirl lipstick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so Sarah, who's your first number one? Okay, first number one. I would honestly say, like, yes, I love Han, but I feel like I know where his character is gonna be. So I'm actually interested to see where Luke is. And, like, how, just how big of a master he is. Like, does he reach Yoda status? Does he, you know, where, where is he at, in his journey? And uh, what will be his journey in this particular movie? Because I hope, hope all these characters have a nice um, character trajectory within The Force Awakens itself. So that's where I am with him. And then, of course, what he looks like with a beard. <laughs> I guess we know, but... <laughs> in full costume i always it's always fun to see them all costumed up and you know like embodying the character beard watch that's what you know everybody <laughs> yes. all so into like you know his what the beard was doing so yes yes that's so <laughs> funny oh well, my gosh you know we've all probably imagined him as older yeah. Luke Skywalker even from you know when the movie you know you imagine that when you're a kid so now they're gonna have to fulfill all of our little fangirl wishes yeah and I think I did see a tweet just this week by someone who showed Alec Guinness 64 years old when he was you know filming Star Wars and then they showed a picture side by side with Mark Hamill 64 years old with the beard so it was like <laughs> wow and he looks good he does he does <laughs> time time flies though it's crazy Okay. Well, my number one is is I, one of Teresa's, so I will wait for her to discuss that one. But uh, <laughs> another one for me is Hux. Hux is yeah, Hux is Hux, Hux the um, <gasps> oh, Harry right. Potter dude? Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> Dom <Harry> Donal <laughs> Dom Gleason. I yes. think that's yeah. right. Yeah, Dom Donal Gleason. Yes. There you go. We'll see. And I've already he, he's Bill Weasley. <laughs> He's yes, but he you. looks, he looks totally he's gonna, different. Yeah, I'm, I think he's going to act quite different in this. I Something actually that came up on um, a TFA speculation panel at DragonCon was the idea that he's so young to be someone in charge. And the idea that, you know, like the Empire kind of got decimated well, with some of their, their top people. If you read so, the books, they will mm -hmm. kind of give you hints why yeah. they're so young. So yeah. yes, read the books. So, um, hmm. Yeah, so it's interesting to see someone young and what happened to get him in that position and how he's going to act because of that. <laughs> he's British. He's evil. Yeah. Yes. Well, that, <laughs> that coat on the shoulders, that's like... That's not good news. Anytime that happens in a movie, especially like with Nazis, that is not that's not someone you want to deal with. No. Nope. <laughs> he's oh, I, someone uh, made a um, picture with him, and he's like, "I'm too cool to even put my arm in my <laughs> sleeves." <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I love that. I was like, that was laughing. That was awesome. Wow. I'm. I'm I'm going with Poe as my number one. This is not what? new to anybody. What? Not, <laughs> what? And I can't believe it. And really, I know it's it. We it's we're talking about the male characters, but we do actually alternate male female characters on our discussion. So when we come up, it's like this time's male, we check it off, and this time we're going to talk about female characters. So we try to keep it balanced. I liked what Oscar Isaac had talked about being. Um, they, in the story, those characters know the story that we know from from the original trilogy. Like, yeah. Han, Luke, and Leia are their heroes. So how is that going to drive him to behave? Mm. Um, I think that's really interesting. And if you guys read Shattered Empire number mm -hmm. one, that last name comes up in that, in that comic. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. So I am even more 
excited. I literally, I literally like the the comic went flying. So there was a fan <laughs> with that, and and maybe that Teresa that you should move Shattered Empire up your list. Oh, it's on there. It's, yeah, it's it's on there in its little December spot. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. No, so Poe and he has two thing. I think Sarah, you sent this to me. He has two standees. He has. Yes. The full size in his fighter pilots Mm -hmm. and or it might be the wall. One's a fat head and one's a standee. But he is in the X-Wing fighter pilot outfit, which, whoa. And then he also has one in his (laughs) resistance outfit. And and Trisha, they're life size. They're life size. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and, and then, and then I saw this. Also, people were talking about why with with Oscar Isaac would you have him with his helmet on and all your in all your stuff that came out on Force Friday. So, but there is a shirt that I thought was Han Solo and his Resistance gang, and this was on Fist Sun. And then I I looked at it and it said Poe Dameron and his Resistance gang. Wow. And so, yeah. And so I got that shirt. So. <laughs> no holding back. Well, you know no. what? Poe po would be my second choice. So can I jump in here? You can. And say, okay. So I he's my second choice because, well, I've always loved those those alpha male, you know, characters, those pilots, you know, the, that, that kind of thing. So I'm very excited to see. And the only uh, to see where his character is going, and the only reason I didn't pick him first is because I I knew Trisha, you had dibs. <laughs> <laughs> I will share Poe with everybody. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but people got share him with. Yeah, but I'm excited to see where he he fits in. Of course, in the whole story as well. And yeah, I'm I think I'm gonna love his his personality. So we're we back to Teresa now. We are, but I am sharing my second one with. K. Yeah. Because we both we both love this particular character <laughs> in different ways. So, we both <laughs> our number 2 is Kylo Ren. We have a very special place for Kylo Ren. Um me because I'm crazy and I like dark side characters. I actually like Kylo Ren more with his outfit on. Um I'm going to go ahead and say it <laughs> as opposed to it off. People can <laughs> as opposed to yes. Kylo Ren. <laughs> as opposed those two are naked color red. Um, and the reason being is that um not super attracted to Adam Driver. Oh. Um, but love the Sith outfit, you know, with the mask and the everything. So um we'll just keep it that way for me. Did you, I don't did really you pull like... back the the um hood so you could see the back of the mask on Kylo Ren? Why would I do that? Oh, no. I don't oh it's not open. Oh, you didn't open I about, thought you were supposed to toy? open your toys. That's what I don't you open action me. figures. No, you don't? You know, I don't op- okay. No, I, I don't open action figures and the reason being is because I display everything out on my shelves and action figures have tiny feet and they fall down. So, um <laughs> they stay in their boxes for the most part unless it's an Ewok cuz an Ewok has bigger feet and so he's more stable and stands. <laughs> but the humans have tiny feet. They mm. fall over. The rules are Not getting more good complicated. good for displaying. <laughs> no, that's just me. I open everything else. I just don't open action figures because they fall over. And I come home and it's like, you know, they've been in a battle and they're all just like laying there. But, no, I love Kylo in his outfit. I'm just not super attracted to Adam Driver. Okay. That's okay. You can't be so attracted to So why do you everybody? like Kylo Ren, Kay? I like Kylo Ren partially because... <laughs> My boyfriend, but because he cosplays Kylo Ren. He, wait, wait. So Kylo Ren's your boyfriend? What? Yes. <laughs> this is like so. Who All right, is? story. Ren. <laughs> Kylo Ren. Oh wow. Um, the short version of it is it started at celebration when when Trisha and I were looking for a Kylo Ren, and uh, yeah, and we found one, and it wasn't really the best photo op. People kept walking in between the camera and us, and I was like, I don't know how to pose because. We just saw the second trailer. Oh, Trisha was like, well, how do you think, you know, what do you think the relationship is? It You're in all light colors. He's in all dark colors. And yeah. I was like, well, clearly they're best friends. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so after that, I wanted to redeem myself and get a good photo with Kylo Ren. And that didn't happen until um, the next show I went to, which was C2E2. 
And I saw him from across the room and unfortunately was not wearing my Ray costume at the time and just screamed out Kylo and was waving at him. In a way, I don't wave to any normal humans. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and then I was like, oh, because I just waved to him like he's my bestie. Because <laughs> Kylo is my bestie. And then that became a running joke. And then I actually met the guy and now he's my boyfriend. Oh, so cute. Yeah. <laughs> and- I had no I idea that was going to happen. And now that, she's, yeah. she's Twitter Insta famous with her boyfriend, Kylo Ren mm-hmm. cosplay. That's so yeah. awesome. And how cool is that? That, <laughs> that your boyfriend and you both cosplay. Like, and it's not like you set it up, but it's not like you were yeah. like, let's do this. You know, it was like totally rando. I like that. I we, that was something we were both working on independently and then found each other through it. So thanks, Disney and Lucasfilm. <laughs> thanks, Kathleen Kennedy, for getting yeah. it done. But uh, I also JJKK. Yeah. <laughs> I also like Kylo the idea that um he believes what he's doing is right. He doesn't mm. think he's a bad guy. So I think Love that's a, that. a really interesting character choice. Darth Maul's a hero of his own story too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Until he dies. I love bad guys for that reason. He, he's he not snarls dead. a lot. <laughs> which which <laughs> one? Your boyfriend, too. Kylo Ren, or or Darth Maul? <laughs> <laughs> no, Darth Maul. Okay. Maul's a lot. <laughs> yes, Sarah, Darth Maul's not dead. I know, I know. You should watch the Clone Wars. I, I have. Well, I, have. I, I love the fact that Kylo Ren is the meta, apparently, is that he is a Darth Vader cosplayer. Yeah. Because the helmet is essentially <laughs> like some cosplay dude made a Darth Vader helmet. So I... I'm fascinated because there could be some crazy interesting stuff about that. That, hmm. um, yeah. Well, and, and, and my boyfriend's first Star Wars cosplay was Darth Vader. <laughs> Even better. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, I think sadly Wait, we I have didn't come. Get my number two. Oh, you didn't do your number two. That's right. Sorry, Sarah said her number two, so I got confused. Okay, I'm lost. Yes, it's whatever Warwick Davis is playing. <laughs> oh, good call. Oh. Good call. Thank you. Man, I was not smart enough today. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I had to think outside the box. So. Trisha I tried us. to think outside the box for myself. I love oh. I love Warwick Davis. So I'm I'm excited that he gets to be part of this. So I'm sure we'll get some great more videos out of him. But no, whatever he's <laughs> playing. Because we, we don't know that too, and I feel I think we should all say that our third favorite is Chewie. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to Wookiees um, ruling the screen. <laughs> <laughs> can I say no? No. Am I allowed to say no? No. You yeah, you can have another. You can have a number three if you want a number three. But there's only three. Can I think of any more. BB-8? I can't think of any other guy. BB-8. I was yes. going to say BB-8. I pick that. I pick that. <laughs> if he's a guy. What about Snoke? Yeah, I... What's a Snoke? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's we don't know. <laughs> and that is how we will end. <laughs> Fangirls going through. All right. Well, this has been another super exciting episode. Um, What's a Snoke? So if you guys want to get in touch with us, you can actually catch us on social media, Instagram and Twitter. We are at FG Going Rogue. Trisha where, is at Fan... What? Where you can hashtag What's a Snoke? <laughs> what's a Snoke? I literally can't even read this right now. I'm laughing so hard. <laughs> Oh my gosh, somebody else read <laughs> Okay, I'm going, I'm going. Okay, so you can find us on social media. We are at FG Going Rogue on Twitter and Instagram. Trisha is at Fangirl Cantina. I am at Ice Cold Penguin. Sarah is at Jedi Tink. And Kay is at Geek underscore K. You can email us fangirlsgoingrogue at gmail.com. You can find us on Facebook. Just search for Fangirls Going Rogue. And our amazing Tumblr that Trisha runs is fangirlsgoingrogue.tumblr.com. And you already said our Instagram. So Sorry, my bad. That's okay. So voicemail. You know what? We haven't gotten a voicemail in a while. And if you want to, you know, just call us and say, hashtag what's a Snoke? Snoke? I don't even know how to say it. Snoke. <laughs> hashtag what's a Snoke? Yes. You can always call us 331-21-EWOKS, which is also 331 
213-9657. Please go over to the Rebel Force Radio page on iTunes and leave a positive review. Five-star reviews are great, as well as positive reviews. And in your review, make sure you mention how much you like fangirls going rogue. So until next time, dun da 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 da. Yub. 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 Snokes. Have you felt it? <laughs> <laughs>